what threats do you see uh, tech having on real estate? Believe it or not, not as much as people might think. Um, I remember there was a fear that in, in remember the states they had a sign and you would just click on and you could put an offer without using realtors. The problem with that mentality is like, no, the, the realtors are still needed because there's still a human touch that's required like about the needs. And because what something looks on paper might not necessarily be what you need in person. Like, you know, like one walking through and getting a person to know that. But if technology gets smart enough that knows you intimately, maybe there might be a threat to our industry, then it might be obsolete. But I just, you know, I don't see that. So I, I instead of, I don't think it as much as a threat, but I can see it definitely changing. Hello and welcome, and this is the DC Talks Podcast. I'm your co-host, Agent Double O, with the main man here, David Cinelli, in the house. What up, what up? It's a beautiful <laughs> summer day, man. You know, like, this is our first episode in summer, summer, man. That's we got the t-shirts And on. you're wearing all black. Like, like, aren't you afraid of the heat? Well, it's kind of cool today, you know? Yeah. Like, it's a, the, the day of the courting, it's like, it's not completely hot like it's been. It's been a freaking heat wave. Or sweat. Man, but, like, the clouds have been covering us the past couple of weeks. Hey, not to mention, I'm Italian and I sweat, right? So, I don't know if, like, so at least the black covers it a little bit. Got a little tan going on, I see. A little, not much. A little bit, a little yeah. bit. It was better when I was in Mexico, got back, and I, that was a good tan. I'm not, I'm not as dark as you, you know? But look at me, I'm like, I'm wearing all the green, man, you know? I'm trying to match, trying to, like, look stylish for summer. It's, hot, it's, it's like, super hard to be stylish in the summer because you're only restricted to shorts and a t-shirt. Or like a shirt and a t-shirt so there's a lot you can't really bundle up like the way you can do in the fall yeah yeah you know what i'm saying one thing one thing i hate about corporate it was like when you're like you weren't allowed to wear shorts mm -hmm. so days like but then you walk in and the ac is pumping so you like you're actually wearing sweaters are so cold but yeah you know it was always make fun like the girls can wear like their summer dresses everything look all nice and pretty but people are afraid to show off their legs that's it no, you just, you weren't, like, you weren't allowed. <laughs> in corporate culture, you, like, I don't know how many places you're allowed to wear shorts. Shorts, yeah. yeah. But, um, you know, one thing that I wanted to chat with you for today's episode is technology and real estate. Okay. You know, we've done a lot of, like, real estate episodes where we haven't really chatted about tech and how it really is uh, impacting, like, the, you know, the real estate world, like, from the platforms, the agents, and et cetera. So you've been a real estate agent for, you know, eight years, eight, eight years now, eight, right? Eight, no, just over eight years. Yep. Yeah. So how has technology played like a significant role in your success and growing your business? Honestly, it's changed like, wow, it's wow. I adopted as fast as I could into mm -hmm. technology because that was the wave we saw things going. Like when I joined, there wasn't really that many people doing videos and the videos mm -hmm. you got were like, you know, like a slideshow and that. And then I think there was a report and see 2016 that came out and this is where i started like the light bulbs were going on in my head it's like for uh listings that had video you had a 200 sorry 403 percent more response rate mm. than listings that didn't have a video and i'm mm. like huh and then you know gotta gotta obviously give props to my uh to my brokerage they keep bringing in all of these coaches and they talk this is the new wave talking about videos and they showed us some examples and it was mm. So I started as an early adopter and it kind of gave me a competitive advantage, obviously yeah. having the staging and the pictures. Pictures had to look great, but then the video also drove it home. Mm -hmm. um, but what really started to bring everything together was, you know, COVID 2020. Mm. So back to like when the brokers bring in the video, what year was this that they start? Re like, because video has been there for years, right. right? But to adopt it in real estate, when did you feel like they're actually really trying to push it as like a main strategy? <sighs> probably 2016 2017 like mm -hmm. every coach like every coach they brought in was saying about uh, these techniques so we have there's lots of great coaches out there in which our our, our office you know brings in like mm -hmm. um so like, I mean, there's a lot of them like jared james is one of them too you had uh rob vivian which doesn't do videos uh you had richard robbins uh you have you have tom ferry all these mm -hmm. and Little by little, they started some of the presentations showing what we could do, and they could mm -hmm. talk about just in the beginning was social media, mm -hmm. right? And just kind of like, and all of a sudden, social media, like, then it started adopting to, oh, it's not just social media anymore now, it's video. So, all of those coaches, because we bring them in periodically, then they started hammering, and they were like, you have to be an early adopter, you have to be an early adopter. So, I was, and I think Sam Hewitt was here before, I'm one of those people that if you tell me to, you know, try something, I'll Screw it, I'll try it. Yeah. I was trying it. And that's what she like she always said to me. She goes, That's what we loved about you. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, still love about you. You're like, fearless. You're, yeah. you're, not, you're not afraid to try something. We'll new. try. Well, that's why we have this podcast. We're yeah. trying something not everybody's doing. Sure. There's a lot of realtors doing podcasts, but mm -hmm. I kind of we wanted to do something just different than the regular podcast again from realtors. So I I was an early adopter, I guess, in that kind of sense, 
you know, and just went all in. Yeah. So would you say that real estate has become a garnering attention game because there's being a realtor, which is, you know, your ex and knows about being a realtor, mm -hmm. but now it seems as if it's whoever can garner the most attention on social media, the one who can actually get the best houses video wise, but that agent cannot be a good realtor, but they just have great videos. So is the game shifting towards just making good content to be, a, is that like, if you can make the best content, you could be a great realtor. Uh, yes and no. And it was a couple of years ago that people that were doing the most content were getting these leads because people weren't doing it. But now we're noticing it's kind of shifting back. Like you have to have good content, but you also have some substance. Yeah. Um, There's a realtor I, I worked with a couple of years ago and, uh, you know, like she did a lot of like social media stuff. She still does. Uh, but when it came to brass tacks, let's call it, when it came down to the degree, like I got my client a fantastic deal on the property because she did not promote all of the attributes of the house. Mm -hmm. So she didn't know a lot of things. So we're walking through and we're talking with the buyer and he's like, we didn't know anything stuff either. Like we beat our, like, again, you think of competition, you're overpaying. I think we left about a hundred, like the, the, the seller left about a hundred thousand dollars on the table because the realtor didn't know a lot about some of the features of the home. Yeah. Like, the high end insulation it had, like about all the speakers, the systems that they, like what it was involved. Uh, every time we walked through, he was like, so the like, seller was like, you mean she didn't tell you this? Nope, she didn't tell you this. And if we would have known all those features, there was, they put at least three, $400,000 more mm -hmm. than we thought that they put into the home. Yeah, so like the, the whole house was a hidden gem because it wasn't promoted Correct. the right way. So that's right. You have built-in sono speakers. You have like a fireplace. You have like an elevator. All these things add. Well, the elevator you would see, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, But like they add more to the house. And you can there was a lot of things more. behind the walls we didn't know about, which you wouldn't see, which mm. you need your realtor to tell the story of the yeah. house. So you need them to tell you like, you know, for example, like I had a, I had a client in which, he told me after it was listed, he's like, uh, did you know that we have spray foam insulation in between the joists between the main floor and the upstairs? Do you know why that's a big that's a big selling feature? No, why is it? Sound barrier. The upstairs mm. was like when you're upstairs, you don't hear a thing mm. going on downstairs. It was it was a huge sound barrier. Yeah. And he spent like when you when you pay for spray foam, so again, interior walls don't really need because you're like so the, from, from the ceiling, the floor ceiling, you don't need insulation because all you need is the outside walls. But he spray foamed in between there. Mm. So it was always quiet upstairs. Mm. And it's like, so some that would be a huge selling So of course I started promoting that. And I'm yeah. like, he just didn't tell me. He's like, oh yeah, I forgot to tell you this. I'm like, so what do you mean you forgot to tell me that? If you're partying downstairs and your wife needs to be resting, you got the boys over. That's a big feature. You know, like- It's a huge feature. It saves a lot of like annoyance for like the people who are in the house. Hey, if you ever want to have sex again and say, no, there you go. It's good for your wife to be quiet. It's like, it's, it's a great selling feature. You know what I mean? You're not disturbing her. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you know, you mentioned that um, COVID changed everything for video. So walk us through the time you're adopting video to accelerating that yeah. in the pandemic. Like, What was the difference? So uh, pre-pandemic, we would do, you know, I was doing the videos and stuff too, but I wasn't always doing like the the floor plans and we weren't always doing the 360 tours. We're just finding there wasn't always a lot of traction. And the idea behind that, and I was talking to another realtor, which uh, is a friend of mine too, but he's on the lazier side, but uh, he didn't like spending the money. And he's like, well, no, I want people to come in the house. If you give them too much of the floor plans, you give them all the 360, uh, they're not going to want to come and see. There's it no incentive that, for them to show up. Exactly. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but you're not getting quality buyers at that kind of stage. Uh, so I, I kind of like, you know, it's kind of newer in the game, kind of listen, but I would do the video. I would do the high end pictures, all the stuff too. And then when COVID hit, things changed because we wanted to get people into the house without seeing the house. Mm -hmm. So it was all like panic was like, was widespread. So what I saw, what I would, my goal was to give as much information of the home. We'd only get serious buyers coming in. So you would do the video, you do the pictures, we do the 360 tour, uh, we did the floor plans because I wanted buyers to constantly be looking at the house and know what they're getting into. So when they booked an appointment, they knew 100% what the house looked like. They just wanted to verify it in person. So the idea is, and I still do this to this day, is we reduce the amount of like, buyers that are coming in because you're not getting all these look seers. I'm like, oh, let's go see what this actually looks like in like person. window shoppers. Exactly, yeah. window shoppers. Instead, you only have serious buyers. And that's why, so sometimes even in today's market, I may only get 10 showings, but I might get three offers because those buyers coming in are 
already have already seen the house mm -hmm. and they might watch it multiple multiple times the other thing is too with our technology i can see how many times one person is looking well, <laughs> at, at the video yeah. so okay is this we like video that. like on um on social or is it um on like an mls type of platform so it's both okay. yeah so you don't get to see it so much on um uh, on socials how many times one person sees the video mm -hmm. But through our virtual tours, mm. we get a report, and at the report, it says how many people are unique. So if you had, for example, 500 views of the video, uh, and then it would also say, like, well, out of the 500 views, how many of them were unique, mm -hmm. and how many times were replays? So mm -hmm. you kind of sense how many people are looking at them over and over again. So it's kind of it's a good metric to have. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, so, so because of COVID, I started doing this. There were people that were doing like virtual tour of open houses and stuff too. And I thought that was bullshit. It was well, it, it was corny? horrible. Is it really? corny or is it like just it was very corny? It's very like, corny. Yeah. yeah, one of my one of my friends, uh, his name is Alex uh, Wilson, uh, mm -hmm. works with Remax, and he actually his clients bought my house. They, they, he was a co-op, great guy. Uh, he has a really great brokerage going on too. Uh, and I remember one time he goes uh, like he's he was one of the first ones that I did a virtual open house to see what it was like. So I clicked on it and Alex was talking about it. And he goes, hey Dave, how you doing? I'm like, oh my God, you're live. I didn't realize he... <laughs> And it was just, so we were just talking to nobody else. And I'm like, this is kind of awkward. He's like, we were kind of talking about it. It, yeah. was, it was weird. It was just, and he agreed too. Like we, tr we were trying new stuff. So that's why I was like, well, instead of doing that, I didn't like the kind of, me and him were kind of back and forth. And we're like, mm. well, you know, I let him be the guinea pig on him. So instead, that's why I started doing like the virtual tours. I started doing videos saying, hey, mm. listen, if you like this listing, I have the 360 tour, we have the floor plan here's the video like mm. everything comes in one package mm -hmm. right and i've been very selective of who i choose to do my my packages because everything comes in one nice little box mm -hmm. right so it's one link and you can send that link to your to your clients and they can share it as well so everybody has all the information on the property yeah. so because of covid we had to switch our mentality mm -hmm. you know like kind of like give more mm -hmm. you know it was it, i always like to give more but i, I thought you know like, now nah, moving forward i'm not going to be like Oh, I'm not going to show this because I want people to come and see it. Yeah, you know, it was it's it's more of no. Oh, here's the, here's what it is, and that way when people come in, they're not surprised. Mm. So how you like so pandemic is over now. We're, <laughs> in we're most people's eyes. Most people's eyes, you know, you still st st uh, still see some people pushing the narrative. How um, <laughs> we're not talking about that. We're not talking about that. <laughs> we know we know we can get in trouble for that. Yeah, exactly. Um, get canceled. <laughs> now that we're back into a regular form of doing things. Are you still doing the same things that you're doing in the pandemic as just like your regular way of doing business? Or are you reverting back to pre -pandemic? No, I'm doing it more. I'm actually adding stuff you're actually to turning it. up the dial. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, we just sold my buddy's property. Uh, mm -hmm. He got a really good price. And I remember we sold in December. Natalie and I sold in December 2021. And I remember he goes, he loved our package. He goes, listen, I want you to do exactly what you you did for me. And I said, no, 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 you don't. He's like, look at me. What do you mean? I'm like, like, like buddy, like his name's Derek. I'm like, Derek. I've gotten better. <laughs> like, I'm like, what you're gonna get is even better. What I did for my own house. He's like, get out of here. I'm like, yeah. So we've we've changed the the videos we're doing, the TikToks, how many we're doing, how many different reels. We're doing like three or four types of videos, and it's like, and we're promoting it. It's it's way different. It's and that's what you want, right? I can't be. You don't want to revert. I'm not gonna go back to 2019. Like, hell no, you know. But it's funny what what I was doing in 2019. Not, some people are, aren't even doing that today, but that, that's a different story. I'm not getting, I'm not knocking you. Like everybody has their own niche of what to follow, but I find that you give high quality and that's why I've been successful, right? It's like, and I'm not hammering you for price either. And that's, yeah. that's a different story, but I've seen some of my colleagues do what I do for a percent or 2% higher because, mm -hmm. you know, they just feel that they, they deserve it. And I'm like, yeah. no, I think that's not fair. Mm -hmm. So would you say that, uh, if agents are not adopting a video strategy, they're going to get left behind in 2023 oh, yeah. and beyond? I think they already have. They already have, eh? So if you're not providing the quality service to your clients, there's only thing one thing you can do. And what's quality service in your eyes? So there's a lot of quality service. It's how it's, the house is presented. So I like to, my pictures, video, everything are, are, are very top notch. They, they're aesthetically appealing. Why do I do that? Right. Well, we do that because what you visualize, you see, you retain 80% of what you see. So as the house looks like shit, guess what? You're going to remember that house looks like shit. 80% mm -hmm. of what you see. So if you give high end stuff too, it's like amazing. Great. So that sticks in your mind. Right. So that's why we do that. Um, I forgot the question. <laughs> I was going to say too, like oh, the high end. So why do we do? So if, 
high-end video. I like to tell the story of the house. I'm not going to come in and just tell your house and say like, and this is how technology works, right? So how do I tell your story? What I do is I talk to my sellers and I say, yo, like, what are the selling features of your home? What are behind the walls people don't know? Why did you buy this property? I can see that you have nine foot ceilings. I can see that you have, you know, our, our porcelain tiles. I can see that you have, you know, stainless steel, et cetera. I can see all that stuff too. What are you not telling me? What is the story of this house? Because that is what I could promote. So when somebody's coming in, like that's why we do like a longer video and we talk about the area. We talk about the selling features of the home that you can't see. We tell the house a story. Mm -hmm. And that goes a long way. So we have a longer video. It's usually five or six minutes. Mm -hmm. And then we also do like a five, the top either. Sometimes we'll do a top five, it's on top 10 or something like that too. We kind of break it down for a real quickly. But that helps tell the story. So this is the quality we're giving. We're giving more information to the buyers. And then we are also figuring out, we already know what our target market is. So we are gearing what we're saying towards your target market, right? If you don't have any of that, you just put your, do the, you know, the three Ps, put a sign in the ground, put it on MLS and pray to God that it sells. <laughs> There's only, if you're it's only doing, yeah, that's a Hail Mary. If you're doing that, there's only one thing that you can do to get the, the, the get that listing, and that is cut your commission because you're not providing any really service, no yeah. quality. Then when it comes to negotiation, I'm, I'm also good with that too, right? Mm -hmm. Like you see my wife, she, you know, She's she, all, she all ranks me for looks wise. And she, <laughs> <laughs> so I must be able to talk or do something to, yeah. to, to score my wife, right? So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, like, and that's, you know, all kidding aside, but no, it's true. It's like I've, my goal is not just to make sure. I make sure I take care of my clients and I give them the best possible deal. Speaking about that, I saw the post you had on IG the other day. You guys were at some wedding yeah. and you posted a pic of her. Then she posted a pic just like, oh my God, here's my husband getting an unflattery pic of me. I just, you know, I, I saw that post. I was, I showed her that picture. I took a picture. She's like, like I'm posting it. She's like, she was okay with that. And all of a sudden she's like, then she didn't like it afterwards. She's so, Isaac and I were talking to so Isaac's doing her cameras. We're talking about how critical, I'm like my wife's beautiful, right? Yeah, yeah. It wasn't even a bad picture. And she's like, you posted that one. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. Oh man, that's just girlfriends and wives, man. They always have something to like find uh, criticism yeah. in. Yeah. So like, you know, like um, now a lot of agents, as we say, they're doing video. It's part of the game. Um, it should be. If it's not, you're listening, you're missing out. You're missing out on a lot of like potential, right? So it is a blessing to have video, but do you think it can also be a curse as much of, as it is a blessing because a lot of people have access to you now? For example, like for you, but wait a second, are you talking about me and doing video or are you, are you talking about in general? Because, in general, right? Because, we're because I've so seen some realtors, sorry, before I've seen their yeah. IG accounts and all it is is real estate, real estate, real estate. I don't like, I'm bored with that. I just don't even click on that, mm -hmm. right? It's like, so it depends. Like, it so, depends. so you may, I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta make sure when you're asking me the question, what you're so, asking me. So what I'm saying, right? You are one of the few realtors in the GTA that I know who is pumping out videos every single day. Yeah. Right. Different segments, different homes, different tours, podcast, you showcasing just your regular life. Do you feel like that gives people a lot of access to you and it can yeah. become overwhelming? Because even though it's giving you business, the amount of like traction you're getting from that content can become like a distraction and people just have so much access to you. Like where, you know, why do you need this much access to me, even though? <laughs> So, you get what I'm going with this? Yeah, of course. So what I do is, I guess it's unique, and I've heard this from other people. I give access. I want people to know me. Mm -hmm. The reason why I do this, I talk about my kids. I talk about my wife. I talk. I have certain segments. I pump out a lot of videos. First thing is I get it from my family all the time. It's like, you're fucking everywhere, eh? I'm like, yeah, that's the idea. I mm -hmm. want to make sure you see me every single time. I want you to think about me. But the second thing is that, you know, like I know not everybody does what I do. I understand that there, and I've I've heard these conversations. And uh, one of our guests coming up is Jason Pereira, for example. Like we had a conversation with him, my buddy Joey Durzo, and we're sitting there like I couldn't do what you did. I'm like you you just kind of talk about stuff. I'm like, well, I feel that me talking a helps people. Um, maybe going through some stuff that they never thought. But B, you get to know about my psychic. And why do I do that? Well, the idea behind is that like. You know, nobody wants to be sold to. And I got this from Ryan Serhan, another coach that, that Royal Page Signature brought in. He's like, nobody wants to be sold to, but people love shopping with their friends. Mm -hmm. So by getting to know me, and if you talk to any of my clients, and you've been to my events, my clients aren't just a they're, number. They're like family. They too. are family. They come, right. they hug, they hug the kids, they know the wife, they know everything about yeah. the dynamics. And that's what I want. I yeah. want them 
in order for me to do my best, mm -hmm. I got to look out for you. I got to love you. I got to like, and not love you. I just get that you get so close with people and you get to, because we're, we're not just realtors, you know? <laughs> you know, we're we're family social. Uh, so, what do they call it? Therapists. Uh, yeah, we're we're, we're th therapists when it comes to like I'm helping people with through mental problems sometimes too. My clients call me. I'm, I have this problem. Um, sometimes they're fine family dynamics are normal, so we have to you know be a social worker for family. Um, sometimes there's kid daycare. I've I've gone into like houses with clients and I picked up their kids and like I, I do that right. It's like it's I have kids. It's like even it, even uh, Carla Wilhelm's um, ex husband did the same thing for us when my parents were buying a house from um, Graham. Yeah. He took us to the movies and we watched sahara together so every time i see Graham, I'm like i oh, remember back in 06 yeah. we watched that movie together yeah. and that's what it takes because my parents were shopping for think about that. look what you just said what <laughs> so he reached out he, he you remember something i remember like you remember he, he that. treated us he bought us popcorn he bought us lunch People and i'm there with my little sisters and he's there like hey girls you guys good you need anything i was like wow so this is what it really takes to to sell a house well and, and that's the thing is like so if you're just in this business just to make money mm -hmm. You're not going to do that. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be part of somebody's lives. And people can see right through that. That's never been my goal. My goal was never to make a shitload of money. It was not my goal. But it helps. Don't get me wrong. Like long way. I had no idea what realtors made when I got my license. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. That wasn't my goal. I've when I got my license, I was, you know, I remember selling a house and I've told you the story before, you know, my brother-in-law was there the last house in 2014. Matt and I came up with a strategy. Like he helped us kind of little things here and there. Like we, we painted it, we staged it. We're like, and we told him what price and we, we kind of told him stuff too. And he helped us with like, you know, home inspection, all that kind of stuff too. And I remember thinking to myself, it's like, I think I could do this. You know, I've, I've, I know enough about houses. I've owned houses. I've done the flips. I've done all this kind of stuff too. I know I can do it. Like, so when I was packaged out, I was like, and try not to be a realtor because again all the, all the bad realtors i had but i kind of got into it because i'm like i felt that that's where god was pushing me to go you know what i mean it was just like i had all the skill set so i'm like well, that's why i did it mm -hmm. but i got into it because i loved the business and i loved it and i and i figured out the relationships was where to go and i'm like so when i could do events and i could do that and i can become part of people's lives i think that is a great, not a consequence, it's a great side effect of mm -hmm. actually loving your job and doing more than other people do. Yeah. yeah, Amazing, man. We've spoken about the positives of tech and real estate. Where do you feel like it's not being utilized enough to really get agents to the next level? It's a great question. Um, I don't think a lot of them are using all the, the sources out there. I've been to... You know, not everyone's doing the, you know, the, the even the flybys, you know, doing like the high end videos and pictures and looking. I've seen some guys try to do stuff on their phone. What's don't get me wrong? Like your phones are great, um, but your clients want something sharper, right? It's just like, I, I think the avenue where you can do with technology, you can be your own person and, and bring that out. I just, I think a lot of people are just scared for what, what the phone holds or what people see and they just hold back. So it's it's not necessarily the technology. I think it's unlocking what's up in here and mm -hmm. getting past those barriers. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm trying to use technology to get to these people as well. Like I try to help other realtors all the time. And I'm like, that's why I do like a segment. It's called Real Estate Fridays. We do it on Fridays. A lot of that is for other realtors to talk to them and say, hey, here's some advice for you. you give them some big bro advice. Big bro advice, yeah. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Again, I'm trying to shift the mentality of real estate. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not always about me, 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 where it was in the past. You know, yeah. like it's, yeah, I think collaborative makes a better industry. Yeah. And uh, what about threats, right? Because tech is taking over. AI is I, know, I use ChatGPD to Chat, like a Chat. lot. For, like, it helps me with a lot of my descriptions now. And it's I, great. I, it's super quick, super fast. They and go it, too far. And I, and I they try to like so it, many options. Yeah, you know? I know. It's, it's a little too much. It's a little overpowering. It but is. yeah, yeah. But, but it's a blessing though, right? It, it really, is. It shortcuts the time that we spend like really mulling things over. Absolutely. Like, what am I going to title this? What am I going to say about this? You know, we use it internally as well too, just to think about like How dare uh, you? other things. Um, but what threats do you see? Uh, tech having on real estate believe it or not not as much as people might think um i remember there was a fear that in, in remember the states like, they had a sign and you would just click on and you could put an offer without using realtors the problem with that mentality is like no the, the realtors are still needed because there's still a human touch 
is required like about the needs and because what something looks on paper might not necessarily be what you need in person like you don't like one walking through and getting a person to know that but if technology gets smart enough that knows you intimately maybe there might be a threat to our industry then it might be obsolete but i just you know i don't see that so i i instead of i don't think it as much as a threat but I, I can see it definitely changing and it's even look but even look how our tech has changed in the last like say five years, you know, you got like we talked before House Sigma. There's I, have, I use an app called Listed, which shows you all of like properties, what they sold for, how much they're on, but on the market, it gives all the information. Where people were scared of that ten years ago, like no, because they wanted you to go to them for the information. Well, that's not happening anymore, right? Like I think now the consumers are getting smarter, they're more educated. That actually helps our industry. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I, I don't really think there's as much. I think the threat, I think, for technology is for the people not adapting. You're not going to have a career much longer. It's adapt or die. It's adapt or die. Yeah. And you being using technology like to the fullest, what are some platforms that are so underrated that really help your business run efficiently that perhaps other agents are not really privy to? I wouldn't say they're not privy to. I wouldn't say that because I use all the regular ones, yeah. right? Like so... The only one I don't use is Twitter. I don't think it helps us as much. I really like LinkedIn because LinkedIn has an algorithm where you don't have to be a follower to see all of your exposure. So, for example, yourself, you could like my post and somebody like your dad might see it just because you liked it or commented on it. I love that algorithm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. Um, I, I would say make sure you're on that. I don't I think that's I think LinkedIn is being underutilized. Mm -hmm. uh, but. Everyone else is like, if you're smart enough, you would be on the other platforms. Mm -hmm. Still use Facebook because there's still a lot of, you know, a lot of older generations. Facebook people. is not like 40 and plus. Well, they're the ones buying the houses. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Right? It's just crazy how that whole shift happened. Yeah. Like, we used to be obsessed with Facebook back in the yeah, day. I know. And now look at us. But, like, it's all about. I'm still on it. Yeah, I you're know. You're still on it? You still post your pics there? Is it, like, family Yeah, man. Pics? Well, I still post the videos you do for us there. I know. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. But it's that's not... your page, though. That's the David Chinelli page. But I'm saying your personal profile. I, but, I, but I share them on my personal profile. Oh, you do, eh? Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, Okay, okay. Yeah, nice, yeah, nice, I share. Nice. Yeah, I, I would still continue to use that because, believe it or not, that's mm -hmm. also a lot of people still use Facebook. Yeah. And then even, like, TikTok, believe it or not, like, I keep saying believe it or not. TikTok was thought to be just the kids like saying, oh, just for dancing not. and all this kind of shit. It mm -hmm. doesn't, not so much. I, I I think you need TikTok now because the generation, believe it or not, there's a lot of older people going on TikTok. Mm -hmm. And during the pandemic, I was always getting laughed. There was a lot of information shared on there you weren't getting from, from the media on both sides of the story because there wasn't, you know, there wasn't any filter at that point, mm -hmm. but you were getting banned at certain things. But I think a lot of people still stuck with it and they've changed TikTok now than where it was like you know, 2020, 2021. Yeah. Uh, to wrap things up, what are some tech tips that you can provide uh, real estate agents before we close out the show? So we can get technical when we're look, using apps, for example, like how things look. So if we're using like Instagram or TikTok or like you want to make sure your quality is good. So even your phones is great quality. And like if you're actually in the apps, they they encourage you to use their 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 apps to record videos and make sure they're under 90 seconds for certain things. And so that that matters, right? So the, the app, follow what the app and what they want you to promote it. That's huge, right? So that helps you. But there's other things you can do, like other technologies which aren't social media will really help you. Like I know some some of my colleagues like to use a CRM system. So CRM kind of helps you with your clients and your database and knowing uh, how to who to call. Uh, I would do some research on those. There are some really good ones out there. Me personally, I went through a couple of them. I'm not a huge huge fan of them but i do use like this email service um which is called bomb bomb like the word bomb double it bomb, 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 bomb. dropping bombs but yeah yeah it's like bomb 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 yeah um i absolutely love it like there's there's two different versions of it i pay for the more expensive version because what it is is it was like a tv show back in the day um on, on hbo where they were talked about how it condenses video that you're able to share without killing your bandwidth that's what this does like because video has made such a surgeons sometimes email is not enough so so what the service does it allows you to share videos without killing your bandwidth so you can put it like in an email service i have like on a month on a weekly basis i had all my videos in one video that you can do from youtube and all that and it kind of condenses so when people open up they can click on the ones they see and you can track to see mm -hmm. who's watching all of them which is great you can also embed a video if you pay for the higher end stuff you can embed a video into your emails mm -hmm. so if you get for example i say oh and you're coming to you like hey my sister has a wants to buy a property great what's her email so, so I'll introduce myself. Instead of just saying writing an email, I'll take a video of myself 
And I'll say, and I'll send it to her an email and I can see when she opens it up. Mm-hmm. It's already know when she's opening up and seeing it. So it's kind of smart. So it's a great service that way. It's kind of like a MailChimp, but you know, but for it's videos. More interactive. Oh yeah. yeah. And I use that for all my listings as well. Like, so for, for example, if you book an appointment, what we do is like, if you have, uh, I, have I usually have my assistant set up a bomb bomb and which we have a picture that says thank you for booking it has a great picture again video visuals matter and then if we have a home inspection we embed the home inspection in there too you click on it, it brings you to a link home inspection virtual tour area report everything is in one email mm-hmm. also if you do uh if you're doing a, a, an open house like i do an open house i have a qr code link mm-hmm. which you use the qr code you click into you fill out some information and they email you that that, that bomb bomb that, link, that bomb bomb, that bomb, yeah. bomb it's all done through the service yes uh so i think it's all that's unbelievable because then again i could see when you're open up who's interested and i can you know follow along who's i, I can show people mm-hmm. all their information for that sorry i can show my sellers that these are real people because you're going to want to fill out your right information because you're going to want that package mm-hmm. so if you're interested in the house you want to know what the, the area report and the home inspection and all that stuff is mm-hmm. and i do all that through bomb bomb mm-hmm. Uh, it's also a good way of, for, for tracking. You can use bomb bomb for many, many different things. Again, as long as it has a QR code, you can, I do it for my parties. I do like, mm-hmm. and again, it's just a way to track it. And I use that as my CRM system. Mm-hmm. And finally, the last piece of technology I would also encourage people to do use is a QR code for a virtual tour. Mm-hmm. So when you're hiring a realtor, they should be providing you a virtual tour, which has videos, pictures, all that information, like from that you've paid for. And then you have a URL. So when a buyer's walking in, so, sorry, <laughs> when a buyer's walking into a property, I display my QR code. It says scan here for the virtual tour. So you scan it, and now you have the virtual tour on your phone mm-hmm. with you. Mm-hmm. So you have all that information. And it's all being tracked, and you can see who's watching and who's interested. It. What's your uh, advice to those agents who are free to put themselves out there? Just start. Video? Oh my God, just start. Yeah. We have eyes. The people are on on <laughs> people are on social media. You know, we can see like, everyone's worried about what they look like. It's like okay, the camera adds ten pounds. It's like just so figure that. But remember, when you meet somebody in person, as long as they're not if they're not blind, they can see what you look like. Mm-hmm. They can hear what you talk. Why not just try it? So what I've told people in the beginning is like, if you don't want to post something and have it there permanently, start by a live mm-hmm. a live feed on Instagram and see how it goes. And yeah. then just get more comfortable doing that. And then in twenty four hours, it's gone. Yeah. Right. Then you get a little more comfortable, and then you can start doing it. And then learn, have somebody help you edit stuff too. If you don't know how to edit, like editing's huge. Yeah. <laughs> but just start. Just start. Ah, just start. You know, it's funny. The other day, I saw my uh, there's like this inverted mirror, uh, thing. You know, like when you look at your phone, and then it flips the. It's yeah. like it flips your face around, and your face just looks like as if it's like distorted. Distorted. Yeah. I saw. I was like, yo, is that how people look at? Me? <laughs> Because I say that's actually how people look at you. Really? Like, yeah, yeah. Because what the the vision you see yourself in the mirror is in the it's it's oh it's opposite. That's it's right. Opposite, right? So yeah. what you see the inverted version of yourself is how actually people see you. Interesting. Which I find very. I was like, bro, that's how people look at me. Have you ever tried that filter? No, I'm scared to try enough. it out because <laughs> your face is gonna go like this. Your mouth is over here. Your I already have a busted there. nose. My nose is already crooked as yeah. it is. It's, it's already big in front of my it's face. Legit. I get it. I get it's, it. It's, it's legit. gonna make you so insecure about moving. Great. Forward. That's yeah. all I need. Is more insecurity. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Owen. Thanks for that. <laughs> oh man. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed that episode, please comment below on YouTube or on social media if you're watching these on the clips. Um, this has been a great conversation, DC. Tech, we haven't covered this. Uh, tech is taking over, right? So it's either you get with the program or you get left behind. If you're an agent, start putting out some more content out there. Really start promoting your business out there and don't be afraid to adopt new platforms. That's going to absolutely help you uh, get to the next level. Any last words, DC? No, just the first you start. You know, We were all scared at one point and yeah. none of us, if you look at my first videos, they were horrible so you do get better the more you do it it's like anything else yeah you just get better and more efficient and more efficient way more efficient yeah things seem hard until you realize they aren't right exactly Exactly. so yeah we'll see you in the next episode everyone this is agent double low signing out and uh, we'll see you in episode 31 have a great week and we'll chat with you soon peace ciao